it's 9 a.m. on New Year's Eve 2016. We got a car. Let's see what we got right here already. Acura Integra GSR. There's a few things with it. Needs some love. Paint's a little weak. No special on the roof. Wheels definitely weak. Got some play already. The little bent right there. And uh, this fender here. This fender is a wonky. Good news is, is uh, we have a another fender already, most likely torched as well, but we'll see. Came with it, um, but then we got these other wheels that I picked up yesterday. So I picked up the car Thursday and picked up the wheels last night, and now it's Saturday. I've had the car for two days. Uh, we got a lot to do today. It's 9 a.m. So, and it's dirty. It is dirty in here. That's the other thing I need to do to this car. So I got this Bluetooth dongly dongle thing. And uh, got this app thing called Torque. We're going to do some poking at the code for the code. There's, there's, there is two OBD code, uh, I should not do this stuff when I'm just waking up. I have two O2 sensors in this vehicle. I need to... <laughs> it's not yawn so much, but... I need to find out which one. Show log fault codes. Which is P135. Bank 1, sensor 1. Okay, so it's the front one. All right. There was not a lot of uh, purpose in playing mix and replace if this was going to be uh, bank one sensor two or whatever the uh, computer's different options. Basically, if it has a two, it's the rear one. If it's uh, if it's one, it's the front, uh, most likely. So, as you can see, it's a little chilly out here for New Year's Eve in Arizona. But uh, yeah. Get some uh, jack stands out and uh, get this uh, get this party started. Get a new T sensor in this pig. These wheels are disgusting. It's pretty dry. Yeah, it's going from that edge. A little oil from the trans in the back. But this thing is dry. I'm not awake enough. I'm going back to bed. Just kidding. So as you can see, my complete garage is in 100% disarray. But I'm moving in early February, and I'll have a garage of my own. Not quite this big, a single car. But I have a place to do this stuff. So, my old toolkit from when I was in high school. And as you can see, I only got like three inches, four inches, and a big ass saw. A couple sockets in here, and there's no sockets. So. Yep. 
hippity doo da day. Let's uh, let's go find seven eighths. There's a five eighths, two five eighths, eleven sixteenths, nine sixteenths. Can I just have a seven eighths, three eighths? Welcome to my life of garage stuffs. Oh, and then there's more in this box too. Yeah. Do need these later. I should trick with these. Pretty much everybody in the world knows it by now, but it's a trick. I'll show it to you. Just stuff those. There. Hmm. Okay, I just wanted to try and do this right, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to do it right. So this monster dealy here we got this guy let's go see if we don't put right there as you see the wire goes up clearly zip tied and disconnected too all right so you smirk the car guy tips to see what's up with this sensor essentially I'll give you the quick and dirty on it basically you got four wires I don't know if you because it's dark here. So you have four wires. On this car we have a blue, a white, and two blacks. And the, the two blacks are the heater circuit, which is what the code is. Oh, yeah, okay, so the two wires is your your heater circuit. And you need a test resistance on that heater circuit. Basically, if you get infinite resistance or if you get nothing, um, your heater circuit is actually truly toast. If not, then you got a problem with your wiring. Basically, you should be getting 12 volt to the heater circuit part, which is, again, those two black wires. So, we're gonna grab a multimeter, my AutoZone special, and we're going to rip the damn thing out, hopefully. Okay, so the air, the car goes through. Let's see if we can demonstrate this. Essentially, you take this multimeter, right? And you put it on resistance, and uh, so right now it's at 200 scale. <clears throat> and you take these test leads, and this one's a little bit different. I'm gonna guess it's the two white ones. I'm not 100 sure. Okay, so the idea of it is, is you get these four wires. Uh, typically, the two same color wires. I'm guessing is the heater circuit. So, uh, not 100% sure on this one because this one does not match what his description was, which was two black wires. So, as you can see, the resistance is changing, which is good because it means the circuit's intact. So, we need to go into the car and check this. So, there's the plug, and I apologize, but we're not going to be able to see this. Essentially, we got a plug. And on the character side, there are two black wires. I love that. So if I take these two, and I hook them both up to those prongs. And I can't see my, my reader. Why don't you look at that? There's no conductivity. This O2 sensor is definitely bad. The heater circuit is, I think. That looks 100% like Eric the car guy's example. So, I, so all I did was test uh, on the connector side, there's two black wires, it's a heater circuit. Put some pros in there, check to the resistance, and it's, uh, yeah, it's bad. So, um, what we need to do is we need to get this off, but as you see, there's some flashing that's been pulled up for whatever reason. Um, maybe if I bend these back, I can get the crescent in here. So, let me grab some pliers and give it a shot. Alright, we're back into the car. I'm just gonna go through here. Figure out why in the hell anybody would do this to this flashing. Because this flashing didn't do anything to hurt no one. This is not gonna work. So you can see, I might be able to see, I don't know. Uh, we got this flashing right here. I can't even 
can see on the screen. O2 sensor, metal flashing, more of a metal flashing back here. I need a 70 inch wrench. That's what I need. It's not loose, is it? Negative. Oh, I got an idea. Alright, so here's where we are. I unbolted the little sleeve thing, totally forgetting that there's another O2 sensor at the back of the cab. Got the bottom half off and uh, tried to get my crescent wrench in there and then realized that it won't fit basically through here. So, that means I need a 7 8 wrench, which I don't have. So, I'm gonna move some of this crap inside. I'm gonna go stand in line at some store somewhere and get me a real tool set. Because I totally would like to spend money on other things, but screw that. Okay, so this is the ranch that I need, and uh, it's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, but let's get under here. Worry about, worry about this. Sensor now. Victory is mine. So, here's a million dollar question. Where did I put the freaking O2 sensor? Oh, it's right here. Alright, so this is the new one. Um, now I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna put this one in. Hopefully, not as bad. Let's put it in. Alright, there you go. Tins back on. O2 sensor in. What the right tools? It's fine. It also helps to do a little bit of investigative knowledge and, you know, cut the wire and then have the right tool. But, you know. So we move on to wheels. Maybe a fender. So we're gonna go back here. We're gonna go fault codes. We're gonna clear log fault codes. Should I perform this when the fault has been fixed? It's been fixed. At least I think it has. We press OK. Check engine light. Adios. Goodbye. So now we're just gonna start the car for a second. Check engine light. That's good. Because it means things are working. Let's do something about these hideous wheels. So we're just gonna pop these lugs off and uh, smack some new ones on here. These are going away. Alright, so my camera died. Put the wheels on. Uh, what else did I do? Started poking and prodding at uh, all the essential stuff. Um, the spark plugs, I don't even know if you could see me right now because it's so dark in here. Spark plugs are totally fried. Um, gapping them wouldn't even make a difference because the electrode is completely smoked. The windshield wipers are smoked as well. The um, it appears that I either have leaky valves or I have bad rings because it looks like there might be oil in the combustion chamber, um, which is not good. So I'm gonna grab my what call it here. I'm gonna go for a cruise. So let me grab my mount and my machine, my uh, garage door opener. I'll get out of here. I'll go to the parts store and spend my money. I feel like. Uh, I feel like a lot of the Mighty Car Mods tips that, that you know, from the episodes I watched, uh, came into play here. Got find that spot in the clutch, because this is much different than mine. It's got some suspension noise. Um, first question, does VTEC think of work? Let's find out. I'm 
sure I have simple green at the house to do the degreasing of this freaking interior. I think I've got a bucket. Pretty sure I've got a bucket. Um, right now we're just pulling the, uh, the cover off. I think I already got this one loose. Yeah. Here's my spark plug dealy. The first thing we're going to do is do compression tests because you have to be at operating temp and guess what? We're there. Get our spark plug out of there and I'll show you the difference. Definitely see that the uh, the left one's worn down more than the right one. So uh, gapping it probably could have got me there, but for as cheap as like 15 bucks, you can really make a big improvement on your vehicle's health. But we're not gonna put this plug in yet. Um, we're gonna start a process called a compression test, which basically tests how much uh, air pressure is being held in your cylinders with this tool and uh, this tool is actually quite cool because it screws into your motor and then it has this air fitting but what you do is put this in to some degree and the better you can get this tight the better off your compression test is going to show you just put this in your spark plug hole I can't tell if this is even turning at this point. It's not. Which poses a new pro Oh wait, does this come off? And I wanna make sure. I also got some coolant for that now. I don't know why, how, where, who, from, what. Um, I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to use these because that's my engine. So, I don't know. Coil, thread, finger tight, hold the compression tester to the spark plug hole, crank the engine until the highest reading is obtained, usually for three or four revolutions. Okay, so yeah, you don't, you don't crank these in, so finger tight it is. I guess tube tight. <laughs> tube tight. It's funny. At least it is to me.